Welcome into another video in my series where we're going through every single weapon inside of MW3 to see just how viable they are inside of your MW3 Zombies games. Yes, this does include the MW2 weapons, aftermarket parts, and conversion kits. So if you're new around here and you like to find out how weapons work inside of Modern Warfare 3 Zombies, make sure you subscribe, turn on the bell notification so you don't miss out any future uploads from myself on Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. As well, down below in the description you will find the link for my streams and if you're into custom zombies and more things zombies, definitely tune into the streams as we have tons of fun over there and I'd love to see you guys. Now on Wednesdays is my favorite day because they update the weekly challenges. So this week unlocks a new stock and you need to complete five weekly challenges to unlock that. So I went ahead and tracked the five challenges that uh, can be completed in one game. And I went ahead and went in and finished all of the weekly challenges needed to unlock this stock. And this was uh, yesterday's footage. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to upload the video for you guys yesterday. But uh, you can see here on screen as I knocked out all the five challenges to complete the uh, aftermarket part unlock for week three of season three reloaded. And you can see on screen, it was quite uh, the challenge. I got really close to the end of the match here. I just about missed my helicopter, but we did manage to finish it off just before the Xville helicopter came in. So you can see here, I have unlocked the Jack Cutthroat stock and you can see the five challenges that we have finished. So today's video is gonna be a weapon suggestion that was put in the comments and it's the high hitter build from uh, the store, which I didn't actually have the blueprint, but you can see the build. So I went ahead and made my own uh, WSP Swarm high hitter build. Both of those will be in the video, so stay tuned for that. But without further ado, let's get to the WSP Swarm video today. All right, welcome in, and we're gonna be spawning in with our WSP Swarm SMG with the high hitter build. I do have one change from the store build, so uh, stick through the video to find the build for that, and if you guys have any suggestions to create a better build for all of us to use, then let's do so um, in the comment section for sure. So when we spawn in, we're gonna be uh, putting on just our perks and um, nothing to affect the weapon. So we don't wanna increase any damage, we don't wanna increase uh, ammo mods, we don't wanna increase uh, pack a punch. So it's just gonna be the base weapon, like we do in all of these series. And uh, thank you so much for the comment suggestion for this one, this was definitely a fun one to record. So if you guys have any other weapons or builds that you'd like to see tested out inside of MW3 Zombies, make sure you leave those down in the comments for me so I can go ahead and get those done for you guys. It's tons of fun to do these builds and you guys are coming up with some definite hidden gems for sure. So props to the comment section for sure. So that was our first bounty inside of Tier 1 with the WSP Swarm high hitter build and um, it, was, it was doing really good work. Like I was impressed. We had uh, made pretty much easy work of the uh, Mimic inside of Tier 1 for that bounty, which was awesome. So then we went and put Pack-a-Punch on it. We still don't have any other additions to the WSP Swarm build. It's just Pack-a-Punch now inside of Tier 1, and I wanted to check and see what the difference was uh, on another bounty inside Tier 1 to see just how much stronger Pack-a-Punch is inside of Tier 1. We got a Mangler, and uh, you can see the critical damage when I get the critical shots. And then I'm running a dual weld. Uh, it can be a little bit tricky. My aim, aim's not the best on uh, hip firing, um, but you definitely had some super strong uh, critical hit damage on that mangler and took him down pretty much with ease inside of tier one, which was pretty awesome. So we got a pack one crystal out of the deal. I went and put on my legendary tool and napalm burst. And then the next thing to do was to pick up another bounty inside of tier one, which actually was right beside me. So that was awesome. And then and go and see and just how strong this is against the tier one bounty legendary pack punched with napalm and yeah the mimic had no chance like just absolutely evaporated that mimic so the next thing to do is to push on into tier two and see what we can do against the tier two bounty pack one legendary with napalm burst and you can see my bounty is clear across the map so Definitely, if they tracked uh, distance traveled in this game, I'm pretty sure I would be up there for a lot of the distance traveled because I am running all the way across the map multiple times to get you guys these bounty contracts to show you. It would be quite funny. I don't know if in the stats they actually track distance traveled in this game. Let me know in the comments because if they do, I'm pretty sure I've got a lot of distance traveled in this game. And we got a mim er, mimic. We got a disciple inside of tier two, and I. This was one of those fights where the disciple decided to just constantly be healing, and it was just like in the worst possible location. I tried to mantle over things, and that just wasn't working out very well. This turned out to be 
quite the fight in uh, in tier two single pack legendary against the disciples. Now I feel like this fight was a long fight, mostly because of all of the straggling zombies and HBTs that had showed up in the middle of me trying to deal with this disciple. Um, you can see that mangler showed up out of nowhere and just about wrecked me. I was still trying to work on the disciple here but you can see every time i went to shoot him there was just like a zombie in my face or he's able to reheal. so again you guys know if you've been following the series my thoughts on uh, disciple bounty contracts are definitely not my favorite thing to do you can see why like they're just a constant pain uh there's just so much other things happening with him he can heal his movement is really funky sometimes they zip right out of the map and, and you know you can't even kill them or finish up your contract so I was also constantly running out of ammo dealing with this bounty which made it even more of a challenge <laughs> as we you can see my struggle to run around and just find ammo to continue to shoot this disciple because I was having problems and lo and behold there he is summoning more zombies and re healing himself this fight was just I felt like it was a lot longer than it actually needed to be because I feel like the critical damage with this weapon, the WSP Swarms, Pack 1, Legendary with Napalm against the Disciple, when I can hit the Disciple and I don't have to worry about the Riff Raff that's coming at me, and look at him again, summoning more zombies. Like this was just non-stop this one. I've had the worst luck with Disciples in this contract, Bounty Location. I've had a couple times where they've zipped outside the map, they've gone under the water. It's just been the most annoying thing anyway. We did manage to finish off that Disciple there after a lot of rounds and a lot of riffraff that showed up. So the next thing to do is to head over to Pack-A-Punch and get this WSP Swarm build to Pack 2 Legendary with Napalm Burst and see what it can do against another bounty inside tier, tier 2. We saw the struggle I had with the Tier 2 Disciple. Again, I feel like that was mostly because of the uh, straggling zombies that were around. So we went and picked up another bounty inside of Tier 2. This one was a Mimic, and again, we're, we're double pack a punch now with Legendary and Napalm, and what a difference putting double pack on. I didn't even have a worry. I just engaged the Mimic straight on and just fired away until it was dead. Uh, all the zombies inside of Tier 2 just pretty much get vaporized as you shoot them with the thing. So this is just absolutely awesome. A definitely viable weapon to run around inside of Tier 2 for, for sure. We went and picked up another bounty contract. I was really low on perks this match um, from clearing out the weekly challenge in the match before. So I wanted to make sure we had enough cash before we headed off to uh, you know, tier three. So there we go. We finished off that Mangler contract inside of tier two, legendary, um, Napalm Burst and Pack Two. And it was, uh, that was pretty decent. Checked out the loot here. What did we get? We got another perk, which I stowed, which was nice. And uh, the next thing to do, of course, was to go on and put Pack Punch level three on our weapon, head into tier three and grab the rest of our perks, which we did. And as you can see, I was running a little bit low on perks. I was able to get Jug finally when I got to tier three to the Wonder Fuzz machine. So after picking up all our perks inside of tier three, the next thing to do is to go off and see if we can find a bounty contract as tier three has just been incredibly busy. I feel like uh, there's a lot more players venturing into tier three now as uh, more and more of the player base has completed all of the schematics. So it's definitely a bit of a struggle to find contracts inside of tier three. And then when I did, and I ran up to pick it up to show you guys, look at what happens. It self completes itself and just auto delete. So that's definitely an issue they need to work at. How is crowd control with the WSP swarms? You know, uh, legendary triple pack with napalm, not an issue. I mean, it mows down absolutely everything. I was able to find another bounty contract, um, except this bounty phone wasn't working. So I was just having the worst luck trying to find bounty contracts for you guys today to show you. But I did find a mega abomination, and I wanted to show you guys with mags of holding and then without mags of holding. So first we're gonna do without mags of holding here and show you how the WSP Swarms high hitter build works on mega abominations. You can see I had a whole bunch of stuff coming at me as I'm dealing with the Mega Abomination, but it, it definitely does really well with the critical damage for sure. That's definitely something that I noticed. Like this is really strong when you're getting those critical shots on uh, your, your zombies and your enemies, whether it's HVTs, zombies, you know, whichever. Um, it definitely, definitely does a lot of damage. And you can see I brought the Mega Abomination. It was close to my cheese spot here, which I absolutely love being able to bring 
you know, Mega Abominations over here and just make easy work of it. It also gives me a good opportunity to show you guys the, the actual damage the critical hits are doing to the Mega Abomination because you can see the health bar and just how much damage each shot's doing. So I feel like this is an awesome way to show you guys just how strong and viable weapons can actually be inside of Tier 3 instead of just, you know, f uh, constantly running around and dodging the attacks of the Mega Abominations and you guys don't actually get to see how much critical damage the bullets do. So I really do enjoy this and I think it's a good, like I said, I think it's a good way to show you guys what's going on. But you can see, look at the damage that this does to the critical hits. Like he's got his mouth open and just boom, gone. Like it, I know it's not a bounty. Um, Mega Abomination, but just the same, like critical damage is truly awesome with these WSP Swarms. Would I say they are viable weapon to use inside of your MW3 game? 100% um, yes. You do need to get it to triple pack a bunch, I would recommend, just to make things a lot easier for yourself inside of Tier 3. Um, but definitely, these are viable, super fun. Um, with the SMGs, you've got the faster movement, so that is awesome as well. Then we put on Mags of Holding, and uh, we had to go visit George, the Guardian of the Arches, and see how he was going to deal with the WSP Swarms with Mags of Holding on the high hitter build that I have. And we brought him to my other cheese spot here where you can, can control your Mega Abomination and force him to you know, re-engage and disengage you, which can be awesome and really help out when trying to deal with these. And you can see like just the damage there being done to George. Um, truly remarkable. We I mean, pull out a little bit from the walkway and make George re-engage with us. And then you know he turns around so we're just playing around with George here, but you can see the critical damage. He was not happy with me. He was smack, smacking me with his tail. Uh, he was sending armored zombies to get me from in behind. George was not a happy camper today. I'm not sure what's going on. Maybe there was other people that were playing around with George, and you know he wasn't. He didn't like that because it wasn't me. I'm not sure, but George was definitely not in a good mood today. He was determined to run around and get in behind me. Uh, so I had to take quick work of that and pop my head out from my path here and make George re-engage us. And then we finished him off uh, pretty much right here, just charged us down, and we got us up his last laser attack right there. And you can see the critical damage is truly awesome on these WSP swarms inside of Tier 3 with Legendary Pack-a-Punch. We got a Wonder Waff <laughs> out of the deal. I'm not the biggest fan of this thing, um, but we did pick it up and play with it for a little bit. And then I wanted to show you guys crowd control with Mags of Holding inside of Tier 3 so you can see just how awesome these are at taking out just large groups of zombies where you got sprinters, you got armored zombies, you got dogs coming at you, and it's just a lot to deal with. But with these WSP swarms and Mags of Holding, you can definitely, definitely mow down the herds inside Tier 3 that is for sure so with that being said that is the video for the wsp9 swarms we made it out to our exfil and pushed our containment level up even higher on this character i wasn't using my main character today so we got 116 on this one and this is my build i used in the video today so let me know down in the comments below um, any suggestions you might have changes to the weapon build so that we can all work together in the comments section to come up with an absolutely amazing build for us all to use this is the high hitter one from the store you'll notice the only difference on the two builds is the muzzle thank you so much for tuning in and we'll catch you guys in the next one